Well, welcome to another video. I realize it's been pretty much two weeks since I posted anything, and which is unlike me lately. I've been trying to do a, a video a week. It doesn't always happen, but, but I make my best effort. Um, and part of that reason is because I have uh, three-ish videos kind of in the works, projects I'm working on, and uh, none of them are done. Some of it's because I'm waiting on parts. Some of it's because I'm waiting on time. Um, one of them, in fact, I'm going to work on later today. Uh, but regardless, I don't have any ready. But um, I did want to show you some of the stuff that I've... I'm, I'm, to be honest with you, I probably would have been done with a couple of those projects had I not done the one that I want to show you today. Um, I've spent now almost two full uh, days. I've got a couple weeks off here for the holidays. And I spent almost two full days working on this project around here in the shop. So I kind of want to show you what I've done, some of the stuff I picked up, uh, and um, yeah, go from there. All right, guys, so I, I should go backwards a little bit and tell you that um, part of the reason for this video and the things I'm going to talk about in it is because um, I've actually started a new um, business venture, um, and as part of the main business, I'm constantly looking for things that we can do, um, primarily in the winter time to keep some of my people busy and working and keep some revenue coming in because obviously landscape installation is a, is a seasonal business in Michigan. Um, and so, and, and doing things that don't involve snow removal because I won't get into it, but, um, I've done snow removal long enough to realize that it's not a money making venture in the long run. So anyway, that aside, um, what we're working on is uh, a uh, a trailer repair business um, in our area. Um, that's something that uh, there aren't too many places around, if any, hardly that that do that. There's places that where you can get it done, um, but uh, yeah, it's not super common. So uh, it's something we're doing anyway on our fleet of of. 11 or 12 trailers, so we said, hey, why not? So anyway, not to get into that. That's not the whole point of the video. Um, so, but for the time being, um, because my shop for the landscape company is, it's a nice big shop, nice big pole barn, but it's unheated. We never had any reason to heat it. So um, I moved into this house about six years ago, and um, I've been doing some of the work, um, the, you know, the winter prep and repair and, and going through equipment, you know, here, um, and moving towards doing more of it here. Uh, just because it's heated, right? But it's not very big, obviously. This is a, as you can see, this is a, I don't remember the exact dimensions. It's either 24 or 26 feet wide by, uh, I think it's 32 feet long, 34 feet long, something like that. 20, 24 by 36, maybe? I don't know. It's somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's not very big. It's great for what I'm doing right now with it. It's great to be able to park my pickup truck in, and have a little workshop area still, and that's about it. So I make do with it, and I do a lot bigger, heavier work in it than what it's really big enough to do in the long term here in the next couple of years. I hope to build a nice big pole barn across the street on my property. But uh, for the time being, we gotta get this shop set up. And with this trailer thing, that's largely gonna happen here um, because we're gonna hopefully take on smaller trailers to begin with, like the ones we own for the landscape company that can fit into here so we can do work in a nice heated environment during the winter. So with that in mind, the last few weeks, I've been kind of accruing some things and setting some things up to try to make this shop be more usable for those purposes. So I've, I've caught the auction bug. And uh, so the first thing I'll show you is this. Um, now I haven't touched this thing, haven't cleaned it up, haven't even really entirely used it. Um, but pick this up at an auction for, uh, oh, I don't remember, 205, 210, 215 bucks, right around 200 bucks. Um, you know, I had a wheel lift back in the day that my dad had, and I don't know why I got rid of it. I got rid of it when I got rid of my first medium duty truck back 25 years ago. But uh, at any rate, I, I mean, these go for um, $1,500 to $2,000 new. Um, I was checking them out. So Norco is a good commercial brand. Um, it works, the jack works and it's the tilt and lift style. So once you, you jack up, you know, you can, I'm not going to do it here, but you can, you know, it'll tilt like that. 
um, once it's up a little bit so that you can do bearing work with it, you know, with the hub and wheel tire assembly still on the dolly. So that one's not so much for, uh, you know, for light duty trailer use. This is more for when we get into semis and quite frankly, more for my personal projects that you guys have all seen and probably what got you watching my channel on YouTube. So, but regardless, we got it anyway. Then I picked up just some, um, these are just fairly inexpensive to be honest with you, um, jack stands, but I'm always struggling. I came, you know, I grew up with my dad working on smaller stuff and all my projects back in the old days, long before YouTube were generally smaller stuff, cars, automotive, basic automotive. So jack stands like this worked out great. You can see why there's no match for this one and why that one's bent is because we were trying to hold up a medium duty truck um admittedly in some muddy conditions so it was putting stress on them but you know those are just not built for what i'm working on nowadays so um so i picked these up some 10 ton jack stands and uh that'll actually come in handy for even the light duty trailer repair stuff because a lot of times with trailers what you run into is you need the height so i play with cribbing all the time diesel prevent me from having to use cribbing quite so much so cribbing still has its place just nice not to have to lug those around all the time um also picked up a just a simple little um air over hydraulic um 20 ton jack again not so much for the trailers um i'm sure it'll get used for that but more so for my stuff working on big trucks so um tool wise you know you guys might remember i i upgraded air compressors earlier this summer um my parents moved up basically off grid up to the upper peninsula this was my dad's compressor that he had had forever i helped them install it at their house back when i still lived there when i was a teenager um and uh you know in an off-grid situation he has no use for a 220 volt uh you know mildly industrial air compressor so it's still on the small side but but it's it's a lot better than the you know the horizontal tank old 40 year old craftsman i was using um but it uh um, I just had it plumbed initially. I wired it to my switch and I had it plumbed to some trucks here. Well, in the process of painting the L9000 and doing a bunch of other work, I realized that I had a major, major moisture problem. And I had kind of a, a hose coming down from, from my outside reel and I, had, I was constantly hooking up hoses to trucks and it's just not ideal. So what I've done, as you can see, is we plumbed everything to a valve, which you always need. I didn't have it before. Actually used some nice half inch nylon truck airline. And then I picked up, now this is just an Amazon piece. It's nothing amazing. Um, a couple hundred bucks for this, but a, um, you know, a, a mildly effective moisture removal tool. So this will, uh, we've got initially a pressure regulator. Um, I've got it valved off right now, so it's down to zero, but we've got a regulator um, with a, a basic sediment trap water trap then the secondary filter is actually a, um, a canister filter that's in here um, and again it's got a it's got an indicator and and then a, a level sight glass and then lastly is a desiccant filter that's got you can see the blue desiccant beads in there that'll turn pink and i ordered a whole bunch of extra desiccant um, you can see they do work because i last night when i was well, when i was uh filling it i spilled a bunch of them i don't know if you can see that but they're scattered all over the floor now and they're all pink so they do their job um from there then we're we teed everything coming to the outlet i did use small diameter lines that's what i had fittings for this is just to my outside you know i may upgrade that in time but that's just to my my just to go into a, a standard rubber flexible airline that goes up and over and out the wall over there but same thing is um you know valve that so i can control that i don't use that reel all that much but this way i don't have to hook up a chuck when i do and then lastly the main line for in here is plumbed to a nice auto retract reel and i put it on a swivel which is really handy so i can go you know anywhere i want to now before that reel was a manual reel and it was down low which took up valuable floor space and it was always in the way and always getting caught on stuff and it was just a cheap probably a harbor freight reel that was 20 years old and it was leaking bad and 
and it's basically destined for the scrap pile. So, so this is now a nice setup. So for painting, sandblasting, you name it, I've actually got good moisture control now. Is it the best moisture control I can get? No, I can spend a whole lot more money, closer to a thousand bucks, and get get some really good moisture control. But this is going to do, I think, for the majority of what I do. So. So that's the one major increase. And you can see I already took up the extra floor space with my generator because um, that no longer fits in the garage with the kids' toys and the wife's truck. So so we've got, you know, nice nice compressed air set up, even though, of course, I've moved largely to, uh, to battery-operated stuff. You can see the, the fleet of uh, Ryobi and Milwaukee stuff. But, but still, we still use air for certain purposes. So... Um, the other big change in here is over on the other side of my pickup. And that is that a lot of you might remember that right here, prior to two days ago, there was a, you can still see the spot on the floor where it sat for so long and all my overspray, painting overspray that's in its place. But right here, there was a, um, a forced air, basically a, you know, a home furnace, a 70,000 BTU. It was old. I think it was an 88 model, so uh, wasn't super efficient. Um, it was getting tired. And it was here, and they had built ductwork that went up and over, and the, it actually came out. Up there, you can see where there was where the, the hangers came out of the ceiling around my insulation that I put up later. Um, but um, the reason it was set up that way is because when I bought this place, this... 10 foot high by, or I'm sorry, 9 foot high by 10 foot wide door, overhead door wasn't here. Um, there was, you can see here, where I cut out and added this post, and then I added that header up there so that I could install this door. Prior, that was still the edge of the door, but this was a 7 foot high by 8 foot wide door. Just enough, basically, to get a car into. They didn't use it. The previous owners who built this house didn't use it for a car, though. What they had was going down the center of this barn they had a partition wall it was electrified outlets on both sides and that ductwork came out and split and had an outlet to each side you had the his side which was he was a he was a amateur carpenter i say amateur because based on the woodwork in my house definitely amateur territory uh, and she was into crafting and stuff like that stitch work whatever so she had some tables and benches set up over here so they could still run a single thermostat um, but they could heat both sides and have their own little individual areas. Um, so as soon as we moved in, you know, I took that wall out. Um, you know, they had a sub panel and weird electrical stuff going on. Converted the whole barn to a single panel. Um, rerouted the 220. He had the 220 on his side for some of his carpentry equipment. I wanted it over here. So rewired the whole thing, but kept that ductwork. Uh, just because it was there and there's no reason to change it really. Well... What I found in the long run is that forced air, filtered forced air furnaces are not ideal for doing things like fabrication, grinding, welding, and specifically painting. I was going through a filter. If I was working out here all day, there was days where, especially if I was doing a lot of fabrication or painting, I would go through multiple filters in a day, let alone beyond that. Um, so I was buying filters by the case and they weren't lasting very long. So I finally made the move um, and went to one of these. Now this is just a, I'll call it a cheapie. Um, you know, it's still a few hundred dollars, but this is a this is one of those Mr. Heater Big Maxes. It's an 80,000 BTU unit, so it's 10,000 more BTU than the old one. Um, I already obviously had the, um, the circuit running up here for it. And I already had, you know, I had a propane line, so I replumbed everything in black pipe um and you know i did everything to code and um extended my propane basically um and obviously it was as simple as you know location wise i spotted this so that i could use the same wire and thermostat control wire that i had the only thing that's a little wonky is the uh is the chimney i easily could go through the back wall i still might but I hate, I don't like cutting holes in my barn for one thing, but second thing, I already had a chimney here and so I used it. So, so we elbowed around and, and we're still venting out through the roof like it was. So, um, but regardless, um, I also 
did a new outlet because that was really wonky and there was actually a highly illegal and highly dangerous splice that was hidden behind the furnace that I found when I pulled it out. So while there was previously an outlet on each side, um, we went to a single four gang um, on that 20 amp circuit right there. Um, well, yeah, rough. <laughs> if you don't know anything about electrical, don't do it. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. Like everything, right? Right. Um, but you can see, um, furnace is up there. It kicks out heat like crazy. Much, much better cycle times. Much better heat output. And it's quieter to boot. Let alone did I gain all of the space that I didn't have before. So, what did I do with all that space? Well, I promptly built some shop benches. Um, I knew I had some stuff that I wanted to store underneath. You know, shop back my little baby air compressor for airing up high pressure tires um, on a mobile basis and my pressure washer and I wanted that stuff out of the way but I wanted some bench space over top I kept it at 24 inches wide so when I back one of my trucks in I don't lose any space it doesn't cringe on on that at all um, but I've got some nice more extra bench space um, none of this is bolted down yet but I do have had a, had a piece of steel laying around that I'm gonna bolt down eventually and then add a second vise as well. And so it kept some space here for storage of some taller stuff. So that really is a huge, huge benefit for the shop. Um, also redid some lighting, repurposed some stuff for my side lighting for when I'm working on things, added a couple nice 20,000 lumen um, units. Same over here, added some additional lighting so I'm a lot brighter where I get to my nut and bolt and miscellaneous storage and uh you know just added a lot of functionality to the shop so so that's why i've not been around these are the kind of things i've been doing um and uh, just to make everything a little more usable and we'll get to some other videos here soon guys where we actually do some real actual work on things um so appreciate you watching and uh I know it's not super exciting, but you know I've spent a lot of time working with <laughs> on these projects with I don't want to say substandard equipment, but equipment that I've inherited or just made do with over the years, and I'm slowly trying to upgrade those um, to the point where it makes my life a little easier. Also poured some new concrete. As you can see, this was all cracked and sunken and nasty, so we've got a new four foot approach out there full width of the door and we had to come into the floor a little bit and create a saw cut for a relief but um much much nicer there no big bumps anymore and prep for the asphalt driveway i've got to somehow come up with the money for in the next couple of years so at any rate that's where we're at and uh we'll be back in the next uh few days with some more actual project videos so thank you guys for watching i hope you have a wonderful wonderful new year i hope you had a wonderful christmas with your families hopefully everybody gets a little bit of downtime and uh y'all take care